whole reason we have broken the face down into different zones is to easily look for the different types of conditions and characteristics that we would find in the relevant areas. So face mapping has been around for years and years, but Dermalogica have really made it their own. Dermalogica is a great company for skincare and education, and we often use their format of skin mapping and facial analysis within our cleansing routine to really help us, like I said, break it down and sort of recognise what we'd find in each area. Before we do face mapping, you need to make sure the skin is clean. But if we were to take too much oil off or too much dirt, and makeup and so forth, then you wouldn't get to see the real skin, as we'd call it, because we'd be treating it. So we'll do a very quick cleanse and I want you to make sure for next week you've got ready a cleanser of your choice, a bowl of warm water, and then you can either use flannels, sponges, or some cotton wool pads to remove the cleanser before we do the uh, face mapping. If you have a mirror there as well, then that'd be great. You'll be able to look then what we're, see what we're looking for. So we start off with our cleanse. So do this very quickly, once over. Just use your cleansing cream or your gel, your facial wash, whatever you're using. Pop it on your hands, warm it up, spread it slightly, and then take it all over the face. Very quick cleanse over. And then use your, pro your warm water and whatever you're going to use, your sponges, etc., to remove that product off. Pat it dry with a towel or tissues, it's entirely up to you. And then get your mirror in front of you, and we can start looking then at the skin and doing our own analysis. You should have your picture, which looks very similar to this that I've sent you already via email. So you can either just pull that up online or you can print it off or you can just have pen and paper and make some notes for now into which zones we're looking at and what you can see there. So start by touching and feeling. So I said to you look, touch and record and that's how we do our analysis. It's a mixture of looking to see what we can see in those areas, touching the skin to feel it, to see what difference it is there and then recording it down in that area and what we're finding. So on zones one and three, this is your forehead, we'll be looking for things, spots, pustules, papules, um, fine lines, the, 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 the frown lines, so to speak, on the, the um, forehead there. Quite often, depending on your skin type, you can see patches of flakiness as well around these areas here, especially going back into the hairline. So just make a note, have a really good look, touch it, does it feel rough? Is it smooth? Does it feel dry and dehydrated? Remember what we said before, that there's a difference between a dry and dehydrated skin. A dry skin we quite often relate to a lack of moisture. So as we've discussed in our other lessons about sebum being the skin's natural oil, to provide that lovely suppleness to the skin. If our skin's lacking that, it can be quite dry and that would give you a flaky, coarse texture. Now, if it's dehydrated, we tend to find lines that run downwards rather than across. And the dehydration is a lack of fluid. So you can help that by drinking more fluid, more water, and protecting your skin that way. Okay, so dehydration tends to be a lack of water, whereas a dry skin tends to be a lack of oil. So look on the forehead, what can you see? I mean, down mine, if I feel mine, is quite smooth, but I have got makeup on at the moment. Um, but when I do my cleanse, then it is quite smooth. I wouldn't say I've had too many dry patches. If I've been in the sun, I do tend to get dryness into the hairline there. Um, and I'm not looking after my skin properly. I went through, when I was training to be a beauty therapist, I always remember, I used to do all my face with all my creams and everything. 
but I didn't want to get it into my hair. So I would leave the sort of gap around the hairline where I didn't put any product on whatsoever. And over time, that was really noticeable. I had about a centimeter gap all the way around. And my skin was awful because I wasn't treating it. These days I go treat everything. Right in the center here between our eyes and coming down onto the very top of the nose here. There's numerous different conditions and characteristics that we find there. It can be quite oily if we're working on what we call a, a combination skin type where we have an oil t-zone here we can get open pores blockages um, you can find quite a lot of creases and crevices there quite expressive faces so you, you do find that you can get breakouts here as well right, so have a little feel there have a good look so have you got anything there I think mine's quite fairy. I need to have an eyebrow waxed. But um, have a look there. Again, here, the, the muscle here is called our corrugator muscle. Think of corrugations. And over time, the more we frown and use that muscle, it tends to stay in that ridged format. So we end up quite like that, actually, having those frown lines there. Almost like we're angry. But not necessarily, but that's what we can see. So once we go from one, two, and three, we come onto the ear. So we'll start with the right ear. Now it's important to include the ears in any sort of diagnosis. Chinese medicine uses the ears a lot to diagnose different problems. And also they use them for um, pressure point therapy. So, which is really good because there's different areas on the ears that we can touch to relax, to release the energy channels. But have a look, have a look in the ear. If you've got quite oily skin, then it tends to continue into the ear. The pores can be quite large, they can be blocked. So don't be afraid to get your cleanser in there and to give it a good old wash out when we're treating the skin. Then moving on to the cheek. Depending on your skin type, again, there's numerous different things we can find here. For myself, I've got quite a few split capillaries. I've got a dry skin and it is quite dehydrated as well. Um, quite fine and high colouring. The high colouring is coming from these split or dilated capillaries. A capillary is a tiny little blood vessel and you see them, sometimes they're called spider nevi, the little fine lines, the little red lines, but they are just a tiny little blood vessel which has broken and the blood is trapped just in the layer of the epidermis there. You can see it quite clearly. What we're doing is you can see, see the skin there. I'm sorry, not see the skin. You can see the blood vessel there. If you suffer from anything relating to rosacea, acne rosacea, which I know we've talked about again in the past, high colouring is a key sign or key characteristic of rosacea. You tend to flare up quite quickly and quite easily. The sun will make that worse, um, alcohol, stress levels, product that you put on the skin can make it worse as well. Acne rosacea can be treated but it's very good to go and see a dermatologist or even a GP and they can help you with medication and the right treatment for that because it is a lot to do with the hormones and however much we treat the skin well from the outside in, if your issue is from inside out then you're going to be just fighting fires all the time. So you really need to get it checked out and get the right medication and treatment for it. So again, on here, we can have um, a quite crepey skin on the cheek, um, fine, fine lines, dehydration lines. If you've got an oilier skin, you can still see quite large enlarged pores here. It can be quite moist to touch. You have an oily shine to it, slick. Uh, and the pores do look quite enlarged to allow that sebum, that natural oil to come out onto the skin. 
Look around the eye next. So around the eye, we would expect to see some very fine lines and wrinkles. Of course, we do the expression lines. Also, skin damage. Again, one thing I forgot to say on five, which comes up around the eye as well, is pigmentation. So if you haven't looked after your skin through the years and you've been in the sun a lot, or it doesn't even have to be a lot, it can be just daily doses of sunshine without using your SPF, your sun protection factor, you can see some darkening patches there on the, the cheek and coming up onto the eye area here. There are lots of different types of peels and treatments that can be used to help to soften the appearance of pigmentation, but the most important thing to use really is an SPF, a sun protection factor, and use that daily, every day. It doesn't matter if the sun's out or not, you have to use that to, to protect the skin. Sun is one of the most damaging and aging factors that can affect our skin.